Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing some more AI content. If you'd seen my last video, you'll know the results we got from that one. So, and this time we're going to be working on sort of 3D image type engraving just to see how we can use AI to produce that and then uh, engrave it on two different mediums. I'm going to try it on Slate to start with and then see how we get on and with some MDF. So I'm not going to read out exactly what I'm typing, but if you want, you can just pause the video and see exactly what I've, I've typed into the chat GPT, which is a language based AI model. If you've not used it before, it's really handy for writing scripts, etc. Um, and just sort of spitballing ideas. So once you've got the, the prompt that you want to try, you can uh, just copy that and paste it into Bing Image Generator from Microsoft. It's an awesome piece of kit. It's the same one as I used in the last one. You can see here that my prompt is a little bit too long, so I had to rewrite it. Again, once it generates, you can pause it to rewrite uh, to reread what it said. So once it's rewritten, it, all you need to do again is just copy and paste it back into Bing and take it from there. Unfortunately, it was still a little bit long, so what I had to do is remove perfect um, and then just finish typing the word slate so it all fitted in within the search bar there. Once you're happy with your prompt, you just press the create button and then let it do its thing. It does take a little bit of time, like I said in the last video, but um, it's well worth it when you see some of the results. So you can see here that the, the chat GPT prompt that we took was actually more of a image of a slate that has been engraved rather than an image that we can use to engrave onto a slate if that makes sense. So we have to go back and correct ChatGPT. So one of the best ways I've found to deal with ChatGPT is to talk to it as if you're talking to a friend or a colleague or something like that rather than think of it as a robot. That way you get more human type responses and I find that it's easier to use that way. Again, you can pause to read the new prompt, but basically it's just a case of copy and pasting it again back into Bing and taking it from there, see what images it produces. So these images this time are so much better. They're, you can see that they're 3D. Um, they definitely give off that 3D effect and it's what I was looking for. The shading's perfect, etc. You can see that in this image here. However, I did want it on a white background. I did forget to tell the prompt that. So I went back in and changed that so that we got the desired effect. I feel like a broken record, but if you feel like it, you can pause to read what I'm typing and then the response that we get for ChatGPT. I'm so much happier with this prompt, so we run it through Bing. And these are the sort of images I was looking for, spot on, exactly what I wanted. Loads of contrast, nice shadowing, it's got the branches, it's got the bats, etc. So once I've got it downloaded then, I just open it straight up in Lightburn and you can see my settings on the screen there. So I'm engraving at 200mm a second with a maximum power is 7.8. It's just above the on point for this laser. Um, and then a minimum power of 1, which is basically off. I wanted to do it really, really low so I got all the details and stuff and the shading um, came through nicely. So taking a closer look at this then, you can see it's it's good. I mean, you can see a lot of the details and stuff, but a lot of the detail on the pumpkin's lost. Um, there's not quite the 3D effect on the branches and stuff that it would be liked. So what I'm going to do is run it through a program called GIMP. It's free, you can download it online, not a problem. And then adjust the colour curves. And that basically just plays about with the contrast, um, the black and white in the image. And then you can just see that I'm tweaking it. 
just to a point where the, the black's quite black and the white's quite white. And all that does is it just means that when it's getting lasered, the, the, the shadows and the, the highlights are picked out really nicely by the laser. And then we can, once I'm happy with it, um, we can just run it through the light burn again, same settings as before, and yeah, see how it turns out. So now that that's done, we can see the comparison between the two. This is the first one, and here's the one that we've adjusted the color curves on. And you can see there's a massive difference in the depth perception. It really does look a bit more 3D than the first one did, and a lot of the details are picked out really, really nicely. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it through on MDF and just see how that looks. So now that that's in both done, let's have a wee look see. The only difference with the MDF one is that I gave it a quick light sand just to pick out some of the highlights and remove some of the smoke marks. I think you can agree that using AI for this process is really quite cool um, and it can be quite effective. So have a play around your cell. If you've liked this video, as always, please hit that thumbs up button and maybe consider subscribing as well because it really helps out the channel. Thanks again guys, see you later.